If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die historic on the Fury Road. Welcome to the Mad Max Minute. Don't forget about that extra round in the chamber because this is Mad Max Fury Road, one minute at a time. I'm Rick. And I'm Julia. And today we're talking about Minute 37, which begins with Furiosa catching some bolt cutters and Nux getting dragged around. And it ends with the wives being a bunch of chain yankers. Our guest this week has emerged from the vault once again to help us break down this fight scene. It's Casadella from the Wicked Wasteland podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me back. It's been a while since we last talked to you. We were Deep in the throes of Thunderdome. Well, yes. we were deep in the throes of the crack in the earth. Yes. And we were talking about the future project that you were working on. Yes. Um, it has actually come to fruition. Yep. Sort of. So the Wicked Wasteland podcast is now active and live. We are still currently only published on Libsyn because our first two episodes need to be re-edited really bad before we push it anywhere else because I'm <laughs> kind of embarrassed by them. But we are live. You can find us. We have an Instagram and we are on Libsyn. It's Wicked Wasteland at Libsyn.com. And uh, we are on Facebook as well, although I don't post very much there yet. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head how many different Fallout themed podcasts there are. But with that caveat, you're still my favorite. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was like, there's, there's not all that many as far as I know. I think there's maybe one other, but I think that they kind of did like two or three episodes and then were like, eh, eh. I think they're on the uh, hating on 76 bandwagon, which, mm. you know, a lot of people are on that bandwagon. You don't win by destroying the things you hate. You win by saving the things you love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's, you know, I suppose so. There's, there's, I mean, there's things to like about 76 too. I don't love it, but there's a lot of really good stuff. And it's a very different installment to the franchise. So I'm having fun with it still. I'm sure I would have a lot of fun playing it if I could tear myself away from this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're in the height of your busy time. Ah, yeah. So I was going through the minutes for this week chunking them out, doing my outlines, and I was watching what was happening in these minutes, and I thought, who would be the perfect person to bring in to talk about all this? And I thought of you, Oh, well, Cass. thank you. Now, granted, we might have to bring you back for the disarming scene, <laughs> considering okay. your expertise in <laughs> firearms. I, I will say, I'm not an expert. I just have a little bit more experience than <laughs> the average Joe. I know that some of your listeners hate that term. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Average joke. <laughs> <laughs> the way that Furiosa lashes out at Max following the sneak attack that she gave him last week. Yeah. I was like, we have got to get Cass back before too long. Oh, thank you. As we start off today, Furiosa catches the bolt cutters that were thrown by the DAG at the end of last week. And as Max is being dragged away by Capable and Inherit, we get to see that... Yes, he's still attached to Nux and the door as they're getting dragged around as well. Everyone's just kicking up dust no matter where they are. Yeah, you would think that there wouldn't be as much dust with how much water they're spraying around him. What I like is that people are moving around. Oh, yeah. The wives, they're not really just standing back and watching. Some of them are, and I definitely have thoughts about that. But some of them are getting involved, getting in, getting dirty. They could be getting hurt. They're risking their health and their lives to help in this fight. They're not damsels in distress. They're damsels, they're in distress, but they can handle it. Yeah, they're willing to help get themselves out of distress. They should probably try and focus on developing their grip strength, though. <laughs> especially Inherit, because she gets a really good grip on that chain at the end of last week. And then this week, I don't know if her grip fails her, if she slips or something, but she lets go of the chain and starts falling. And of course, Capable is all about protecting Inherit. Yeah. And so she lets go of the chain as well to just catch <laughs> Inherit before she hits the ground. That could be a weird baby thing. Like, all right, so I've only hung out with a couple pregnant ladies, but I will tell you that everything goes all haywire when they're pregnant because that baby is stealing all sorts of stuff. Brain power, strength, everything, <laughs> like nutrition. And so they're like, they get stupid and they get weak. 
and they get sick a lot and it's all screwy. So it's, she might just have like, she might have had like pregnant mama strength and then pregnant mama weakness. <laughs> the baby giveth and the baby taketh away. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And it could also be that maybe she just lost her footing. The way that she's pulling on that chain, she's using a lot of her weight mm -hmm. to pull. And so if you catch a loose patch of dirt, boom, you're going down. And falling down is not something you necessarily want to do a lot when you're carrying a child. I assume I've never done it myself. Yeah, it's not a good thing. <laughs> I haven't either, but it's not, not something that, you, that you're looking to do. If I learned anything from Gone with the Wind... Don't fall down when you're pregnant. Yeah. But she might not be super great at feats of strength, having been locked in a vault for however long. Yeah, when was the last time she lifted anything heavier than a book? Yeah, I know that you could waste away being locked in a vault. Oh. Now, see, that's the one thing that I think <laughs> Joe didn't give the wives any sort of workout equipment. This isn't like a getting locked away at San Quentin situation where you're out in the yard <laughs> pumping iron all day. <laughs> Well, maybe his personal taste is the waif type of skinny rather than a muscular, lithe type of skinny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't want girls who can fight back either, I assume. No. He doesn't want a Sarah Connor type? No. I don't know why. She's badass. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the wives, in theory, their beds were very similar to the beds that you see in Terminator 2. They could have put them up on their side and then used the legs to do pull-ups. Probably just didn't think of that. Well... With so many other things to distract them. Yes. Music and books and clean water and fresh air and all those other things. <laughs> if you don't think of it, yeah. it's easy to let it fall by the wayside. Yes. <laughs> I do have to say that I spent a year unemployed one time and uh, I didn't really think about working out a whole lot. <laughs> I was just sort of like, this is pretty rad. I get to hang out and read my books and play my games and just not do stuff sucked money wise but you know i wasn't thinking about working out yeah. in hindsight i probably should have i had like two weeks between the end of my classes and the beginning of my internship i have never slept so much in my life exactly. i would get up and then i'd move to the couch take a nap <laughs> i would get up and get some food and then i'd go back to the couch and take a nap it was great right? it was great <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing i don't think joe would have gone for it but if he had been able to find a television with an old VCR and a stash of like jazzer size tapes. <laughs> I could totally see the wives. Like I, I don't have any good examples off the top of my head of a type of jazzer size tape, but just having them all in the thing, doing the, the pump in the air, and <laughs> swaying around. I, like I said, oh, I don't have any oh. firsthand experience with jazzer size, but I feel like it would be funny. Who's the one who was it? It's not Kathy Ireland. Who, like, a famous actress model, like, turned fitness guru and then did those jazzercise videos I know forever and, like, made a fortune. She yeah. was more famous for her videos than for her acting modeling career. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't yeah. remember. Now, a quick Googling says that Jazzercise is dance fitness franchise company founded by Judy Shepard Missett in 1969. That doesn't sound like a famous person name, but like I said cursory googling yeah but getting back to the fight itself <laughs> max has some pretty slick moves because as he's recovering from the chain pull furiosa is there right behind him with the bolt cutters and he almost stands up for her to take his head off but he does this crazy like half half jump quick jump duck thing yeah keeps him from getting his block knocked off i don't understand how he has all the energy with have either of you ever donated blood? <laughs> I'm glad that you're bringing this up because <laughs> several guests over the last several weeks have brought up how much blood is he losing? <sighs> and that's a question that we've never sufficiently taken time to answer. Yeah. But I'm glad that you brought it up because, yeah, you would think if he was losing blood this entire time, he wouldn't be able to do quick rises and quick falls. Oh, yeah. I actually, oh, no, no, no. You can quickly rise and then quickly fall oh, yeah. because you passed out <laughs> because yeah. you froze too quickly. Yeah. So I have in my notes here that I really appreciate the manic energy that he has because it really seems like he's teetering on the edge of sanity. Like some of the times he's just, he's like moving at a normal speed and then he just goes crazy fast and he's all over the place. I'm like, holy crap, this guy is nuts. But like I gave 
I think typically when they take blood, they do like one pint. Yeah. Right? I gave two pints at Dragon Con a couple of years ago mm. because I'm just full of blood. I'm a good blood bag. <laughs> and uh, so I sat there and I gave two pints of blood and I was like, yeah, I feel all right. And then, you know, I had my juice and my cookie and, and then I'm like, nope, nope. I, mm-mm. and I had to go back to my Airbnb and just chill for the rest of the night. I couldn't go and hang out with anybody. I was gone. I was too weak. I was dizzy. And that was just two pints of blood. He's been strapped to Nux for... The better part of a day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And he's been stressed out. His heart's been pounding. And so his blood is going to flow faster through the things. He should be drained. And I don't know how he's doing this. It's insanity to me. But I'm impressed. It's because Max isn't human. Yes. He's a fairy princess. Right. This is true. I he did say that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me fairy princess, right. I remember. I remember. Never forget, dear listener, <laughs> Max is not human. That's how he can do all of these things. <laughs> I love the ballet that Furiosa is doing here. Working with the weight of the bolt cutters and the fact that she doesn't have her prosthetic on to counterbalance that weight. And so when she's doing these swings, she's turning them into spins mm. and then translating that into other swings. It's like a dance. Yeah, the fight choreography in this scene. It really is amazing. I was watching it today and I was like, wow, this is just, this is great. Love it. The fight choreography is very beautiful. However, okay. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> there is a moment where I feel the choreography. It's the moment Max is laying on the ground. He's got the door. He's using it as a shield and Furiosa is whacking down on top of him. The way he moves the door, he knows exactly where she's going. And I know you can definitely like read her body movement so you can tell where she's going. But in that moment, I felt the choreography. Mm. It just didn't feel as smooth as someone who's just fighting for their life. I definitely wondered when Max got pulled back by the chain and had the gun knocked out of his hand by the bolt cutters and then found himself on the defensive from this bolt cutter attack, did he consciously think, I should get over to the door and defend myself? Or did he just start crab walking and suddenly realize, oh, hey, look, there's a door here. How convenient. Mm. Isn't he welded to the door? He is attached by the chain. Like, if he followed the chain back, he would eventually get to the door. Or the door would just fall. (laughs) (laughs) My first instinct would be to cower behind something and if that something is something that i could grab and hold above me then that's even better because i would grab the door i think i think i guess it's a good thing that max grabs the door and doesn't grab (laughs) nux i mean at this point he's still a bad guy so yeah go ahead grab nux use him as your shield yeah door shield meat shield whatever same with max (laughs) right now the assumption is that he's dead so why not use them? That's true. Uh, speaking of Nux, I, I actually... So I don't know if you guys covered this already. Are the Warboys naturally like albino? Or is that makeup? Because when Nux is getting dragged around on the sand and dirt, like I would assume that some of that, if it was makeup, would get rubbed off of him. And just speaking of someone who's had to wear a lot of body paint and makeup for a long extended period of time it starts looking really rough after a couple hours you know the longest i've gone is 12 hours and it still needed to be touched up but he's going days and he's still as white at the end of the film as he is at the beginning so i don't know if you guys covered that or not but i've never even considered it well i think he is naturally pale because he's sick he's dying yeah but they are painted okay they are painted and we talked about a little bit and we've chalked it up to an homage of Joe. Okay. Who actually, like, chalks himself yeah. to cover his open wounds. Yeah. It's really gross. Yeah. I was <laughs> watching that again today. I was like, Bleh. Yeah. Bleh. It's foul. All right. So it is artificial. Yes. But I think it does wear off throughout the movie. And he does start to look a little bit more pink. Okay. But not... Yeah. Was... Not like a normal, healthy person thing. <laughs> does he have a compact that he's he is... powdering himself? He is sickly. (laughs) I imagine that if you wanted to start branching out into other Warner Brothers properties, that somewhere in the Citadel there is a vat of whatever liquid the Joker and Harley (laughs) Quinn fell into that caused them to be so pale white. It's a Joker toxin, I believe. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Like when the war boys start off, they're wearing the doctor clothes with the <laughs> painted hair and then they fall yes. off the thing like in Suicide Squad and then Rictus or Joe will <laughs> lift them up and they'll just be white. Like a baptism in their cult of the V8. Well, yeah. I imagine that the vats are actually mother's milk. Uh, which Toxic is the grossest, mother's milk? Yes, which is the grossest thing ever. That is the grossest part of the entire movie. And Morton Joe's nasty open wounds, nothing compared to the vats. The, like, the just tanks of mother's milk. <laughs> <laughs> that horrifies me. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> I have a feeling that once these episodes air and the mother's milk episodes come up, there will be lively discussion. <laughs> on Beyond Microphone about, <laughs> you know, human breast milk and its level of grossness. Because we find nothing gross about that at all. <laughs> I think milk in general is kind of gross. Like, I'm not a milk drinker. Mm. Yeah, we're not really milk drinkers either. No. So not because we think it's gross, just because... It's because we don't drink it fast enough. We like don't we, drink it fast enough. When your options are <laughs> half gallon or gallon, and you maybe drink a quarter gallon a week... It'll go bad before you finish it. I'm not a milk drinker because they use it as an insult in Skyrim. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I just, I just drink it. Yeah, I just don't like milk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If there's one upside to Max using the door, it's the fact that he's able to get Furiosa to hammer away at the top of that frame where the chain actually goes through the door. So that way, when he kicks at the bottom of the door and sends her flying backwards. As she lands, we see Max scramble around and fish that chain oh, out yeah. of the door. Oh, so maybe that choreography that was bothering you was actually like planned on his yes. part, and he was aiming the door to catch it. Yes, mm. I did not notice that. How is he thinking that fast? With no blood. <laughs> it's one of life's greatest <laughs> mysteries, I think. And I love that he's in the middle of a fight and he takes the time. Okay, hold on. No, I'm going to try and thread this. And it must be hard enough trying to take a big old chain and fit it through the bent and broken opening of a sheet metal door. It must be hard enough to do that when you're not in the middle of a fight. Mm. <laughs> so I think he was banking on Furiosa being thrown this far in order to give himself enough time to fiddle with that thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things, I believe he said it right in the beginning of the movie, there's only one thing that you have to do, and it's just survive. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but if that's how his entire mindset is, then yeah, it makes sense that he would be that quick on the draw. But I didn't even notice that he was doing that in the background. Mm -hmm. Well, having seen that and that brilliance, I'm now a little disappointed in the wives that they just stood there and watched him do it. Yeah. Like, there are other items around that could be used as weapons. The belts. These big, chunky metal belts are sitting right there on the ground. With the nasty, big, pointy yes, teeth. Yeah, with the big teeth. <laughs> Grab one and start hitting him with it. Well, I think the wives are standing there and they just saw Furiosa take a door to the chin. And they thought, okay, do I want to take a door to the chin? Do I feel like I am of a certain combat prowess enough to join this row and they probably looked at their individual stat sheets and they saw what their strength and dex modifiers are and they <laughs> thought if i'm trying to engage in that grappling i'm going to lose hit points yeah and i'd rather not yeah <laughs> that is very fair yeah yeah i look at my stat sheet constantly and i have reactions like that <laughs> no no <laughs> that's not gonna end well besides we need to have time for furiosa to land in the dirt and then shake things off because that gives Nux time to finally wake up. He's been sitting there like a bump on the log, getting water splashed on his face and getting flipped this way and that. And now he's finally coming to. Mm. And he does not look like he uh, is well rested. <laughs> does he aid in the tripping? That's a good question. No, he doesn't. Not voluntarily, I mean. So Furiosa hops up and starts running towards the rig. And as Max pulls the chain out of the door, it's hard to see if the act of Max pulling up the chain sends enough energy through the chain in order for Nux's arm to get pulled up in the air, or if Nux is together enough to raise his arm 
when he sees the chain go up on the other side. I'm not quite sure which one it is. Mm -hmm. Is Nux thinking that Max is trying to trip Furiosa on purpose? Is Max doing it on purpose and just dragging Nux along with him? I'm not really sure because it is such a quick shot. It almost looks like it was all Max and Nux is just being yanked along for the ride. It's hard to say for sure. I don't know. Because I feel like if actual thought was being put behind it, Nux would be the one to purposely trip Furiosa. Yeah. I could see Max focusing more on the door and just giving the chain one good pull to get it out of that notch. And the tripping is just a side effect. Oh, I absolutely think that Max did this on purpose. Okay. The question for me is if Nux helped him on purpose or if it was just an effect of Max pulling on the chain. So I think Nux coming to in the middle of a fight is able to recognize, okay, Furiosa and Max are the ones that are fighting. And even if he didn't necessarily realize that, Nux is not on Furiosa's side, so he's going to do whatever he can in order to impede her. So I feel like it could go either way. Yeah. Yes. So Furiosa hits the dirt, and Max, of course, falls backwards because that's the direction he was going. But Furiosa isn't kept down for long because she springs back to her feet. And we get this shot of a couple of decorative skulls on the side of the tanker. And she gives it a good punch. And lo and behold, there's a gun inside. I totally want a secret hidden skull gun on my car. I like that it's almost like a Halo reference, too. Because you have to go and find all the skulls for like bonus points or like Easter eggs in Halo. But I would, I would love a secret hidden skull gun. What I like about the shot of Furiosa going for this gun is how they work around the fact that Charlize Theron has two complete arms. And sure, she's got the green screen sleeve on her left hand, but the way they're able to make sure that the dirt isn't thrown around in the final edit by her real hand, just with the way she falls, how they choose to like make that work, I think it's very clever. And it's one of those things like, I'm looking, I'm trying to see the instances where Charlize Theron uses her real arm. Like when she springs up from the ground, yeah. the way she puts her incomplete arm pointing down towards the ground, it almost looks as if she's pushing up off the ground with the hand that isn't there. But the way she shifts her weight back towards the good arm, you think, okay, well, is she going to push off with the hand that's not there? No, she's going to rock back and she's going to push on the arm that's still complete. And when she hits the ground, is she going to throw up dust when she, she hits the ground? But no, she lands on her elbow instead of the stump. And it's really clever. That must have taken so much practice. So another cursory <laughs> Google search will show Furiosa's stunt double also has two complete arms. Mm. So it's not like the person that they got to double for Charlize Theron is an amputee. When it comes to action scenes... And I suppose it's different for every actor, but what's the line between the actor will do this and the stunt double will do this? Do you think the stunt double stepped in in this fight? Or do you think this is all Charlize Theron? Knowing her and her track record, I would say that most of the stuff that we're seeing in this fight is probably her. Yeah. I think that the stunt double was probably for more dangerous stuff because Charlize Theron's pretty, pretty good with action scenes. Mm -hmm. And... She's done a lot of that stuff before. So I would think that it's all based on what the actor's willing to do and maybe what their contract is. Yeah. But I think that she's probably willing to do a lot more stuff than would be typical of most actors. The fact that they are stationary in one spot, like, yeah, there's a lot of movement around, a lot of complicated blocking, but I could definitely see Charlize Theron being able to handle this because they're not any sort of speeding ground underneath her. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, this minute is mostly complex and well-practiced choreography hmm. as opposed to stunts like maybe the fall the trip maybe put in the stunt double for that but i can easily see Cass, like you said charlie's being able to handle all of this mm -hmm. yeah just based on what i've seen her do before i think that she's that's probably all her probably yeah so nux is quick to see the gun which is a glock 17 yes According to IMFDB. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not really a, a Glock person, but... <laughs> yeah. I was looking on IMFDB, and we're not going to see it in this minute. We're not going to see it till Wednesday. But at one point, they do switch them out. So we'll yeah. talk about that when we get to it. Yeah. <laughs> but Nux 
having more of a history with the war rig thinks, oh, hey, yeah, that's a gun. I should stop her. And so he leaps out and he grabs her leg and starts dragging her back like a good war boy should. And Max does something interesting. He first grabs the bolt cutters, and I think he's going to use the bolt cutters to cut the chain, but then realizes that that's going to be a very difficult thing with all of this fighting happening over here. Mm -hmm. So instead of going for the chain cut now, he just starts pulling them back. The fight dynamic has changed now that Nux is awake. Mm -hmm. There are three different fighting parties who are on three different sides, but not all sides know who is or isn't on the other one's side. So these three people are fighting against each other, but they don't know who they're fighting, and they don't know who the other people are fighting with. It's very confusing. I think it's interesting that Nux sort of assumes that Max is on his side. I like, know! Like, um, no, Why? I'm sorry, you captured me, stole my car, you're wearing my stolen jacket, and your buddy stole my boot, you've been stealing my blood... Why would I side with you, Nux? No, thank you. I want to get out of here. <laughs> but, I found that very strange. But I don't think that Nux thinks that what they did to Max was bad. I think that the way that maybe the war boys are brought up, maybe they just assume that that's you know, just how the world is and how everything is. Like, right by conquest sort of thing, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I definitely want to keep talking about that when we get to the tail end of Wednesday and the beginning quarter or half of Friday. Okay. Because that's okay. where we really get to see it. Yeah. Where Nux is like friend and Max is like foe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Speaking of foes, the wives are also here. And Toast is taking the initiative to try and grab at Max's arm. But they very quickly realize that they are in over their head the moment <laughs> that Max turns back and growls at them. <laughs> yeah, that was quite amusing. <laughs> Like, good for you, Toast. Good for you to take the initiative and then immediately realize that this is a bad decision. Oh, I have some regrets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like jumping into a bear pit. Yeah, but he's got a muzzle on. What's he going to do? I say he can't bite them. <laughs> he can't. I guess that's a plus. So you've already covered this minute, but when Max wakes up after the sandstorm and Nux is, like, assumed dead or passed out in the car, he tries to shoot his wrist off, but then it looks like he's trying to chew his fingers off. Did you guys cover that? Yes, oh, we yeah. did. But how are you going to get that into the muzzle? Yeah, we're pretty sure he tried to get <laughs> the thumb into the muzzle so he could bite his thumb off. Because okay. if you bite the thumb off nice and low, then the hand is narrow enough to get the handcuff off. <laughs> if it's life or death, did you he bite forget the thumb. That he had, did he forget he had a muzzle on, maybe? <laughs> I mean, how do you forget that? Yeah. <laughs> In this moment as well, we start to see... I can't remember her name, so you're going to have to remind me. What's her name again? Oh, you're talking about Cheeto? Cheeto and the Dag, right? Yep. Cheeto and the Dag? Okay. Cheeto and the Dag. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a morning radio show. Yeah. <laughs> 93.3 Drive Time. So the Dag wants to run over and help as well. Cheeto is holding on to her, holding her back. <laughs> and like clawing at her like no 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 don't leave me cheeto is already showing signs of not being on board yeah the dag seems to me to be a lot more reckless than anybody else in the group she has no problem saying things that might like if she was back at the citadel she might get you know her face beat in or something if she yeah. wasn't worth so much but she's pretty reckless and she could get herself and other people hurt and I could see why Cheeto might be like, no, 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 mm -mm. no. <laughs> I think it's also that Cheeto is using the dag as a security blanket. Yes. Like a Linus Peanuts yes. situation. <laughs> Very much so. Love that reference. <laughs> it's interesting that you should mention the dag with her words getting her in trouble because it's, that's exactly what you see in the prequel comics. A very clear example of Joe looking at her and being like, okay, consequences for what you just said to me. And I won't go into it because go out and buy the comics already, people. I should. I haven't read them. I wasn't talking to you, Cass, specifically to try well, and make you feel bad. I was talking to the listeners. You should go out and give money to people who make good art. <laughs> well, in that category, too, though, I should go out and get them. <laughs> 
So one of the reasons that Max may have abandoned the bolt cutter idea is because he looked up and saw the gun and realized that more so than freeing himself, having more firepower than everybody else would help restore him to the balance of power that he had before the fight started, back when everybody thought the shotgun had ammunition in it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for Max, Nux is kind of a paper cannon and is knocked out with just one elbow to the face by Furiosa. So he just barely wakes up and all of a sudden he's down again. Yeah. And something interesting happens when Max grabs that gun. He turns to look back and we get a flash of glory in the cars. And I'm wondering if anybody has any ideas why. Glory? What? I don't know glory. Did you not know the little girl's name is Glory? No. See, no, because people who just watched the movie don't know these things. Oh, yeah. okay. So I actually had <laughs> thoughts on this whole vision. And I have this whole thing type. I don't know. <laughs> it's Glory. Because this movie makes reference to things that aren't movies. Okay. See, now. Which isn't fair. Yeah. All right. What I have written down. A lot of people, when they saw this, without having any reference other than the other movies, got all pissed off because they were like, who's this kid? Nobody knows. And they were like, wait, is it supposed to be Jessie? But she's an adult and it can't be Sprague because it looks like a little girl. But then I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, just because there's long hair doesn't mean it's a girl. It has Jessie's hair. It seems like it calls him dad at some point or something, I think. And I thought maybe it was Sprague, but just older. And then also I really liked that it was clearly, that's the Giga Horse that's running down this child that I thought could be a future vision of Sprague, what might have been, being run down by Immortan Joe. And it's a nice callback to when Jesse and Sprague got ran down by uh, Toe Cutter. Mm. But apparently that's not. Nope. <laughs> apparently it's some random kid named Glory that I've never heard of. <laughs> I think that's a very fair analysis. <laughs> yeah, the visions that Max has throughout this movie reference an event that didn't happen in any of the movies. It's from that's, the comics. Wow, that's... As someone who has no knowledge of that, that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay. So I'll have to find that out by buying the comics and supporting artists who make good art. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Glory is a child that he couldn't save. Okay. He was sent to save her. He was hired. Yeah, he was basically hired by her mother okay. in order to go into the sunken city and save her from the buzzards. Okay. The fact that she keeps getting shown being run down by the war parties of Joe and his compatriots is one major discrepancy between the movie and the comics. But the comics are technically canon. Okay. Just because of how closely Mark Sexton worked with George Miller and all of them. But the Hope Glory story actually had... Somewhat of a happy ending at first, and then it just sort of blew up after the fact. Like, Max succeeded in saving the little girl. He got his interceptor back. And it was after he did all of that, that boom out of nowhere, here come the bad guys back to run them down. And then he's just left with their broken bodies. Like, oh, I thought this was a win, but I couldn't save them because boo-hoo. Again. Yeah. She's poor Max. Maybe they're just showing the Giga Horse and the rest of the uh, pursuit vehicles as, like, this is the current clear and present danger. Yeah. And, you know, he needs to save himself and others from this danger, and maybe he can try again. And, mm. you know, as referenced later, this is a way to find redemption. Maybe? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's just odd that he would turn around and see her in the middle of this fight with Furiosa. It just seems no, odd to it's me. it's not odd. He is in the middle of a mental breakdown, and he has been the entire movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mental breakdowns don't wait for it to be convenient for you. <laughs> Nor do they make sense all the time. Right. He is actively breaking down. He is having a psychotic episode. I guess it is a little too much for me to ask that psychotic breakdowns conform to story structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It also could be, like, his subconscious telling him that these women are not his enemies, and he's tried to maybe save them. Like, he should be helping them, maybe. Maybe. But he's, like, fighting against that, clearly, because he's like, I don't no, 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 and then eventually. And it doesn't help that he's immediately hit by Furiosa, who pins him against the side of the tanker. Mm -hmm. And I love this little struggle they do, because Furiosa is very much trying to get a hold of the gun, and Max does this thing where he ejects the magazine and uh. flings it away. I always thought it was Furiosa yeah. who did it, 
but her fingers aren't anywhere close to that mechanism. And I think Max, as a defense mechanism, ejects the magazine and flings it away. Because now Furiosa can't use it against him, except... That there's one in the chamber. Exactly. Yeah. And I love the shot where the magazine falls in the dirt, and right. you've got Nux in the middle ground and the wives in the background, and it just becomes a scramble for them to get the magazine. Mm -hmm. And again, here we see... I'm sorry, is it Cheeto? <laughs> yeah, Cheeto. Cheeto and the Dag. Oh, wait. <laughs> again, we see Cheeto and the Dag like struggling with each other because Cheeto won't let go of the Dag. Mm -hmm. I feel like Cheeto was just sort of like along for the ride. I don't think she was fully convinced in this whole exodus. Mm -hmm, and agree. they were just like, if you stay, it's going to be worse for you. So come with us or else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like if she had stayed, it really it does have to be an all or nothing sort of thing because she might have alerted them before they found out that all the wives were gone. So I can definitely see why they would have forced Cheeto to go even if she wasn't comfortable with it. Yeah. I mean, if they go, there will be trouble. But if Cheeto had stayed, it would have been double. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so Furiosa very nearly shoots Max in the face. Mm. And that's unfortunate for Max. But he is pretty deft in dodging somehow. And Yeah, somehow. The movie should have been over right now. Yeah. just <laughs> He the, should have been shot in the face. <laughs> the way that it just comes so close. How does it not even, like, skim his face? I think that the muzzle may have helped a little bit because I think of the way that the prongs on the muzzle are shaped, it might have guided the slide of the firearm away a little bit. Yeah. Because what it does is it fires into the tanker then ricochets away from the face. What I like about this, Max just had a firearm go off right next to his ear. <laughs> and so for the next couple of seconds in these shots as we see Nux scrambling around and grabbing, oh I got it, I got the magazine yeah. we hear that ringing, yep. that tinnitus yes. ringing. Oh. I love that they put that in there. Yep, I have that in my notes that I'm really glad that they put that in because as someone who's had a firearm discharged in the same room as them when I didn't have one of my earplugs fully seated, yeah yeah, that's about right and that was like pretty far away. That was like 20 feet away. And I still had the ringing and it lasts a lot longer than it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ugh. I think it would have been fascinating if they had carried that ringing on longer, like a more realistic time. Yeah. Like for the next 20 minutes, he's having a hard time hearing. <laughs> yeah. They didn't bring it back later either. I don't think there was the scene where Furiosa takes the last shot and it's yeah. right on his shoulder. He says, don't breathe. And he's just like, Crap. <laughs> and he's just, he doesn't even, like, doesn't phase him at all. Stick your finger in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I won't move, but first... It's yeah. the same ear, though, so maybe that eardrum is just blown. Yeah, maybe it's just done for. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a shot of all the scrambling for the magazine, and that gets it, and Max is able to do a spin maneuver and pin Furiosa up against the tanker, and he's got this wild look in his eyes, but... The wives are able to grab a hold of Nux and pull him back, which, of course, just yanks Max completely off his feet. I don't know how that chain got between his legs. <laughs> I don't know. I just noticed because I was like, how did that work that way? I thought it was attached to the back of his head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and no. It's between his legs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it was probably the spin maneuver. Yeah. Probably. Because, <laughs> yeah, put that, it there. that chain went tight and it went right up into his crotch and it lifted him off the ground. He, I wonder if some of that was a jump to get the chain away. Yeah. Like, youch, no. Leap. Save the bits. <laughs> There's a reason Max doesn't talk a whole lot. Because in this instance, he would have been like, oh, high voice. My name is Max. My world is fire. <laughs> <laughs> And Max and Nux hitting the ground, Nux from being pulled back and Max from being flopped forward is how we end <laughs> this minute. We'll have plenty more fighting to do on Wednesday. But before we close out the episode, Cass, is there anything you would like to plug for our listeners to go check out today? Well, I mean, I kind of already plugged it at the very beginning because yeah. I forgot that I was supposed to do it at the end. But you can find my podcast, The Wicked Wasteland Podcast, which is all Fallout related. On Instagram, we are on Libsyn, we are on Facebook, so it's nothing too exciting, just <laughs> that's it. And of course, you're still one of the admins for the Fallout. Yeah, uh, Fallout Fanatics on Facebook, which is uh, one of the largest Fallout fan groups. And yeah, it, it is a closed group, so you have to answer questions to join, but it's pretty simple questions, basically, like, can you follow rules? Do oh, you, you know what Fallout is. Yeah, <laughs> are, are you a fan? Are you going to spam us with 
Ray-Ban's ads. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's basically it. It's really not that hard. It's one of the good ones, yeah, for sure. Thank you. As for us, when we come back on Wednesday, Max and Furios are going to keep slugging it out as Nux struggles against the wives, trying to hold him back. But trouble is looming on the horizon, closer and closer with each passing moment. The Mad Max Minute podcast is a fan project by Rick and Julia Ingham. The Mad Max franchise was created by George Miller and Byron Kennedy, is presented by Kennedy Miller Mitchell Productions, and distributed by Warner Brothers. Mad Max Minute is produced and edited by Rick Ingham. Our opening music is Verdi's Dies Irae by Daniel Batista of DanielBatista.com. Our home on the internet is MadMaxMinute.com. You can follow us on Twitter at MadMaxMinute, like us on Facebook by searching for Mad Max Minute, and join our Facebook listener group, Mad Max Minute Beyond Microphone. If you'd like to support the podcast, visit MadMaxMinute.com, where you can see what's in our Tee Public store, join our Patreon, or even donate to the show to help us keep the tanks full. Thank you for joining us for Minute 37 of Fury Road. We'll see you next time.